American politics are probably unusually more violent than most countries. Now, in the case of both Biden and Trump, they're in an unusual situation in that they are both extremely unpopular. The situation is, you know, going to go down very quickly if Donald Trump were to remove all support for Ukraine. And it's really not, I think, about the assassination attempt itself. I think it's actually about the fact that it's a contrast to Joe Biden. I mean, these people are just hypocrites. They have no strong moral compulsion. And I say that as somebody who worked in the Republican Party for years. Welcome to the Black Sky. My name is Piotr Mateusz Bobołowicz, and our guest today is Dr. Jason J. Smart, political analyst and expert from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon. It's morning in Poland. Uh, it will be published in the in the evening, and uh, right now it must be like middle of the night in the U.S. Well, I'm in Kiev, Ukraine, at the moment. Oh, okay. Oh, you're in Ukraine. Great. Uh, but uh, we are probably not going to talk about uh, Ukraine sensu stricto today. I, um, I want to ask you about uh, the U.S. politics and about what's happening in the U.S. Uh, uh, two days ago, three days ago, uh, uh, we've observed the uh, failed attempt to kill Donald Trump during uh, his, um, his meeting with uh, the voters. Uh, it's uh, quite unusual for American politics to go in such extreme direction? Well, we've had 45 presidents. Four of them got shot to death. And another few of them had got shot, but they didn't die. So I got to say, American politics are probably unusually more violent than most countries. However, it shocked the, the public opinion, of course. No one expected uh, it to happen in uh, 2024. Uh, and we, we like to think that we live in different times. And... Uh, well, um, what do you think can be the repercussions of uh, of this um, event of uh, of this uh, incident uh, for the American politics? Uh, I I heard I read many commentaries that it's well quite sure right now that Donald Trump is going to win. Yes, the polling shows that Donald Trump is winning right now, and it appears <clears throat> unless there's a substantial change that he will win. In fact, the polling shows that he is winning by about three points, which is actually quite a large amount. And in the seven states that are the most important states to win in order to gain the presidency, he's winning in all seven of them, in some cases by more than five points. Do you think, uh, or is this American politics, is the campaign about trying to change uh, the views of the voters to is it possible to make someone, a Biden's voter, for example, make him to vote for Donald Trump or vice versa? Or is it just to mobilize, to encourage your own voters to go and vote for you? No, I think it's got a couple of aspects. One is obviously to have your voters vote for you. The other one is trying to discourage your opponent's voters from voting at all, it is that they stay home, or that they vote for a candidate they can't win, so it's not a threat to you. <coughs> And the other option is that you do want to persuade the so-called undecided voters. And the way that you persuade the undecided voters is to inform them why your candidate is better. Now, in the case of both Biden and Trump, they're in an unusual situation in that they are both extremely unpopular. In fact, Joe Biden is the most unpopular president in U.S. history. Uh, so it is going to be very difficult for him to gain new voters. Likewise, people are so dissatisfied with Donald Trump, there's a good chance that many Democrats, with Joe Biden, sorry, that there's a good chance that many Democrats will just not go vote at all, which would give a benefit to Donald Trump. Donald Trump uh, finally found, uh, announced uh, his uh, vice uh, president. Uh, it's going to be uh, J.D. Vance, uh, senator. Uh, and it's a quite controversial choice. Uh, mm, Probably for many people, many persons in Poland, for example, it's the first time they even heard the name. But in the U.S. politics, he's quite known, and he's known as a critic of Trump. He used to be a critic of Trump and very strong critic. He even compared him to Hitler. And right now, he's running as his 
vice presidential candidate. Uh, what happened? Well, to quote him, his exact words were, I'm not sure if Donald Trump is going to become the American Hitler or if he's just a completely cynical asshole, was the exact quote. Uh, but in case, uh, what, what means next, I think that he is, it shows that he's just very interested in his career and trying to win his own election. I don't think that he really cares about what Donald Trump believes or doesn't believe. He just does whatever he thinks is going to be best. And so he takes the most extreme positions. Uh, he's a strong critic of uh, NATO. He's a strong critic of Ukraine. He seems to have a strong, positive opinion about Russia. Um, and so I think that we're going to see a serious shift in U.S. policy should Donald Trump win the election. I was going to ask you about it. Uh, there is this one thing that uh, unites their views. They are very skeptical towards NATO and they are uh, in admiration towards uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen if Donald Trump and uh, J.D. Vance uh, win the elections? What's going to happen with Ukraine? What's going to happen with NATO? Well, I think that they've been very clear that um, Ukraine should not be a priority in the United States, that it's a problem for the Europeans to resolve. Uh, they think that strategically... And it's true in the long term, uh, in a hundred years and going forward, I think that, you know, China is the priority of the strongest threat to the United States. That being said, that's in the long term. In the short term, the reality is that Russia is the most direct threat. But this is something that they don't acknowledge. Uh, and they think they're not very interested in learning more about it or working on it. They have said multiple times that it's a European problem. And so the Europeans should fix, fix it. You're right now in, uh, Kiev, uh, and, uh, did you have a chance to hear what Ukrainians say about it? What's Ukrainian opinion on the U.S. politics right now? Well, quite obviously, they're afraid. Uh, they're alarmed. The situation is you know, going to go down very quickly if Donald Trump were to remove all support for Ukraine, or if you were going to force negotiations, or if you were to try to create better relations with Russia, which is all very possible. We don't know what his plan would be. Right? He has said multiple times since 2022 that he admires greatly Vladimir Putin. Uh, when the invasion began in February 2022 of Ukraine, Donald Trump said that he was, I think the exact words were, wow, that's beautiful. Putin is an absolute genius. So this is the views of the man who's running for office. So I think it is quite alarming. Uh, and I think if I was Polish, I'd be extremely worried. Uh, there's nothing positive that I can think of that this will do for U.S.-Polish relations. Uh, they are, as I said, very cynical, they're very negative about the role of NATO, uh, and especially the Eastern European countries being in NATO, specifically. So I think that uh, it would pose a threat to security for a lot of countries, not just Ukraine. I would like to uh, get back to the shooting uh, at uh, Trump's rally. There are some theories, some conspiration theories, that it was the work of the CIA, that it was internal Trump's, Trump's team job to uh, promote him, to further polarize the society. Uh, but uh, certainly there is uh, one thing that I don't think um, serves good uh, purpose. Uh, I'm talking about the headlines from uh, such media as CNN uh, or other mainstream, more liberal um, media that uh, denied that something happened in the beginning, the headlines, there were skeptical, very skeptical towards it. It was like Trump was taken out by a secret service uh, from his rally or some loud sounds were heard. Uh, they were not, uh, not talking about shooting, about, uh, about the attempt to kill Donald Trump. And uh, we are quite sure there was an attempt to kill him. Well, I don't think there's any doubt there's an attempt to kill him. And I don't think that anyone seriously, that any serious person believes that there's anything less than an assassination attempt. Um, there's conspiracy theories, but there's always conspiracy theories. That's not new. There's some saying that it was the leftist because they hate him so much. Some saying that it's Donald Trump's own people in order to increase his popularity. Others saying that it's, you know, a conspiracy with the CIA or something. But it's all nonsense. It's complete childish nonsense. It's quite clear that it was this one individual uh, who seems to be a mentally ill, uh, and he did it for purposes that were not political. Uh, he didn't have strong political beliefs. He was registered as a Republican, but he never voted in a presidential election. So it would appear that the guy was just motivated by mental illness. 
Um, but the media, yes, I think it, initially they were very uh, concerned to assert that it was an assassination attempt because it wasn't clear what had occurred. But looking back at the videotape and looking back at the photographs, uh, it's quite clear that bullets passed by Donald Trump's head uh, and were within just a f- less than a centimeter of going through his head. How do you think Donald Trump is going to use this ass- assassination attempt uh, in the upcoming days and uh, weeks? We've seen the photo. Uh, it was, well, I think the world press photo is already uh, already resolved for this year. Uh, how is it? How is it going to affect his campaign? Well, realistically, I don't think it'll affect his campaign. Uh, it's news today. It was news yesterday, but already it's less news than it was two days ago. So I, I think that in a week this will be pretty much forgotten. Uh, there's too much other breaking news right now, and uh, an attempt at assassination is not the same thing as a success- successful assassination. So I think that it will probably wash out that photograph of him being a fighter. Uh, after he got shot, when he stood up and he, you know, put his fist in the air, I think that's probably a very strong sign that uh, they will use that in the campaign. I, and it's really not, I think, about the assassination attempt itself. I think it's actually about the fact that it's a contrast to Joe Biden. Joe Biden is very old. You know, he's been having a lot of trouble convincing people that he's not senile, and convincing people that he's physically able to do the job of president. So con- contrast that, where you know, Joe Biden very clearly gets sort of lost at public events to Donald Trump, who was just shot at, and uh, he doesn't lose his composure. Rather, he says, keep fighting. So I think this is something that is just, I mean, everybody saw it. It doesn't really need to be advertised at this point. Everyone in America saw it. It's a very strong contrast between the two men. You said that there is this uh, image of Joe Biden as a very weak person, as a senile, uh, and uh, there was even an attempt by Donald Trump to criticize Joe Biden for being uh, too reluctant to help Ukraine, to not being strong enough in helping Ukraine. Um, but uh, it doesn't seem to be um, on the table no more. No, I mean, I think that there's a difference between those in the Republican Party in Congress and in the Senate. There are some people who are very supportive of Ukraine, uh, who I think will continue to push for that. Uh, in the case, though, of Donald Trump himself, or in the case of J.D. Vance, I see no signs that they care whatsoever. I see quite the opposite from everything they've ever said or written. Uh, But more to that point, I I frankly would argue that Donald Trump, like J.D. Vance, uh, lacks any strong political viewpoints. I've seen no evidence that either one of them really believes in much. I mean, look, Donald Trump portrays himself as being the president to represent Christian values and the Christian society. Uh, He was just found guilty of 32 criminal counts for illegally taking money from his business to pay a bride to a porn star who he had sex with while his wife was in the hospital delivering their son. So this is the sort of person who Donald Trump is. Um, J.D. Vance is about the same level of mor- morality. And I'll just point out today, they're the party, once again, the Christian party. Uh, just a couple hours ago, speaking was a retired porn star at the conference uh, who had said, I love Satanists, those who worship Satan, because they're the ones who allow us to have abortions and they fight for our rights. She said this just last year. So this was the one speaking at the Republican convention. So if anyone is confused that this is the conservative party or the party that's going to fight for some sort of morals in society, it's just false. I mean, these people are just hypocrites. They have no strong moral compulsion. And I say that as somebody who worked in the Republican Party for years. I am a Republican. I spent years working in the Republican Party. These people do not represent the same values that uh, Ronald Reagan had, for instance. And what uh, happened with the society since Ronald Reagan that uh, the society is actually willing to vote for Donald Trump? Well, I think that its party has just had a major shift. I mean, look, the former vice president of Donald Trump uh, was Mike Pence. He says he will not vote for Donald Trump and he will not support his candidacy. The former president of the United States, Republican George W. Bush, uh, was not invited to go to the convention even by Donald Trump. Uh, likewise, keep in mind that Donald Trump refused to go to the funeral of John McCain. Uh, John, uh, Donald Trump's, uh, 2000, sorry, the Republican candidate for president in 2012 was a guy named Mitt Romney, who was a Republican governor. Uh, Mitt Romney has uh, also said that he will not vote for Donald Trump. And he referred to Vance, 
the vice presidential candidate as being uh, one of the most awful people he'd ever known. When we are thinking about the U.S. in Poland, in Europe in general, uh, we are seeing certain continuity in the functioning of the of the whole state uh, of the United States. Uh, the the government uh, is one thing, the president is one thing, but there are such uh, institutions as CIA and uh, and yes, yeah, some departments of of the government uh, that have certain continuity, uh, regardless of the actual um, approach of the president or some ideas that uh, emerge sometimes and. Uh, do you think it's possible with Donald Trump to more or less stay on the same course as it was uh, for years? And if not, uh, how is going? How is he going to manage to to overcome the Department of State and to overcome the CIA? Well, the good part of the U.S. is it does have very strong institutions, as you observe, such as the CIA, such as the State Department. They continue throughout generations, uh, and it doesn't really matter who's in the White House. So for the normal running of the government, let's say, foreign service, uh, the diplomats continue to do their job. Uh, day to day, you know, 95% of what an embassy does doesn't change depending on who the president is. Probably 98% doesn't even change depending on who the president is. When policy decisions come down to the president, uh, and he appoints the ambassadors to implement them. So where I think we might see a shift is, uh, I'll give a small example. Every day the president receives something called a national security briefing from the CIA which reviews the top security updates from around the world. So it has threats to the United States, developments in other countries, what's going on in all the key parts of the world. And it doesn't take very long. It takes, uh, well, it depends, okay? But let's say 15, 25 minutes. Um, Donald Trump, when he was president, refused to meet with them most of the time because he said, quote, I know more than the CIA. What do I need them for? End quote. So, I mean, they're there. They do their job. Uh, if he totally ignores them, that's also his right. I mean, it's information provided to him, so he can decline it if he wishes. Would you maybe tell us what are you doing in Kiev? Um, I am in Ukraine working on a journalism project at the moment, and the project is at the Kiev Post. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck with with the project in Ukraine. And uh, thank you for this. Uh, for this information about uh, the U.S. politics, it's something that we are certainly going to follow uh, closely in the upcoming months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was Dr. Jason J. Smart, political analyst and expert from the United States. Uh, my name is Piotr Mateusz Bobowicz. Thank you for watching this video uh, on our channel Black Sky and uh, please subscribe and like our videos, uh, share it with your friends if you liked it, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.